because they are great in the rotation. They're also great in holds, which is number one and number one. You have to come out swinging early on with those fundies. This should be the pinnacle of Modern Warfare 3 to this point, based on how both these teams have looked. Toronto in phase winner finals, and it's Atlanta in the hard point to start things off. Yeah, Atlanta already the first ones in. Trades are abound. That's now three dead. Toronto will try to slow it down now. Had to start to play around that rotation as well. You see Scrap taking his time towards top AC, but Atlanta Fairs, they're more focused on soaking up as much P time, P1 time as they possibly can with only 30 seconds left. Good elimination from Draza to kick things off, but Ultra on their rebreak attempt do clear the hard point. Couple of the pinstripe kills start to come through. Selim not in a position to challenge anyone onto the hard point. He's trusting Draza to do that, and he's very successful in his endeavor. Sip just there to save a life. And once more, Atlanta soaking more time, now looking to get towards V2. And now you're forced to get a break if you are Atlanta Fairs. Everybody from Toronto Ultra rotate nice and early. Kleenex finds two through the middle alley, so you have to slow down. Draws is walking away with the final 10, but that's going to put you at 40-2 to two to start this game off. And now you have to slowly work your way up the red. No players from Atlanta are going to go for deep pinches. They're all going to use their guns to try to attack from the front. Now, FaZe has played this map a lot, but they're only breaking hard points on this map 16% of the good. time. So rotations are going to be key for Atlanta or just changing the mold. Abizi able to open up some space from the front side of the hard point. Insight right there to shut the door right back in their face. Atlanta not able to find an entry through Hotel. They can't get in. They can't get in, but they keep on trading. So as long as that player in hill, which is scrapped, just stays alive, your teammates are coming off spawn to pick up those crossfires so already a lead chain is about to be a bound 25 seconds left you're gonna force Atlanta Faith to hit that early rotation and it's gonna be Draza nice and early while the rest of his teammates apply the pressure wow. but they don't find anything a full 60 response from Ultra and a five and one start from scrap already at 45 seconds worth of hard point time so you want to talk about not scamming inside the hard point scrap putting on a master class over towards p3 we go when we had seen Atlanta play this map previously back in December this hard point was a Jekyll and Hyde for them sometimes good sometimes not so much so far owning rotation looking good in their setup yeah they thought that p3 three was a hill that was easily being able to be broken but they figured that out quickly we have to be the team there early oh. and Envoy with the snap and the pistol we know what the young prince is able to get done but that's three dead now he's the only player through the middle of the map He's waiting for his teammates who are spawning over towards the bus side to win a gunfight onto Draza. They can't take him down, but selling with that team, Nate, the opening is now here. And Scrap finds long-range shots onto selling from inside the hill, so Atlanta surprisingly actually do spawn out. Ultra not expecting it initially. Now, of course, they're reclaiming the ground that they have just gained. 30 seconds till the fight for, and finally, Toronto will step foot into the hill. Atlanta, quickly, though, through market. A chance to wrap around the back, hit this for multiple points, and as Abizi opens things up, it's just Kleenex left alive, and he cannot fend off the Atlanta push. That's a big break coming in from Atlanta, but it's only for 20 seconds and now that rotation is gifted over to Toronto let's sit has something to say he only takes down one the trade is gonna be there so Toronto Ultra able to stop the bleeding able to now put themselves in the setup in towards the new hill but we have one player in scrap watching over extensions There's only two players from Ultra in towards the fountain I mean scrap is anchoring anchors <laughs> on this backside of P2 not moving at all from that bus stop actually busy long range takes care of them so Atlanta now with deal with that threat take their focus over towards the front selling him from the high ground clears off the hard point in a busy right Right back into the mix, fighting himself clearance, and there's a break for Atlanta Faze. That's a big break. They eliminate every single player from Ultra in through the fountain side, and now you have to force your way in through their front door, trying to tunnel their way out of red side. Atlanta Faze, they were able to flip the switch and take the lead right on back. With only 30 seconds left. Ultra, they still don't want to give up all this time. Use your tax, hit a couple wall bangs, make sure the door is open so you get some better line of sights, but it's still Ultra. Off the rotation, should be able to set up for oh. next. Unless Draza and Simp combine for two. They're already flipping the spawn. Yep. This is a bad case scenario for Ultra. Yeah, really, really tricky spot. Although, FaZe don't really fully spawn over towards New. There's still going to be a fight over to the top of the street. Selium already in a little bit of trouble. Backside sandbags. Toronto not really worried about it all that much. And maybe you should be. Sell still alive. Finally dealt with by Scrap. And the push for Ultra has to go through the old time as Atlanta now has themselves rooted around the new hill. We're basically tied up in this game. 1A, 1B before this tournament started. It's where they had these teams ranked. So you best believe this is how the game is going to look. But it's a BZ starting off with two. Toronto Ultra now. Just trying to find an opening kill, but the BZ is not slowing down. He eventually does get traded by Kleenex, but that's already job well done. 30 seconds wiped off of that game clock already. Sal and Simp seeing each other from afar know that they've got each other's cross angles already covered. Draws it, the one inside the hard point. Pre-fire coming through, and Ultra just essentially trying to bait out position. Oh, hey. It doesn't matter. Oh, 
but it's flawless on the hold attempt. 20 seconds going to be guaranteed for FaZe. And look how quick Atlanta FaZe are moving. A clean four dead, they know. Now we have to take some ground. We got to put ourselves in a position to play around that P1. Already have players towards top AC. One player trying to make his way up towards top three, but it's all on Envoy, who finds himself behind enemy lines. He's just waiting for his teammates to gain the information before he attacks. Even though ABZ gets ones, the trade is there for Ultra. A clean three dead. They should be the team with the initial time here. And it's really interesting to see how FaZe's tempo has come by way of not just ABZ, but also Simp at times. Both pulling out rivals and finding some unbelievable gunfight wins. But all that told, we're looking at a 50-point game. Ultra digging into the deficit with a lot of early time here on one. Yeah, this is good, too, because the setup right now, you're making it super difficult. They already found three kills around the map. Draws is trying to find an opening through foul and cannot finish the kill onto Kleenex, but now position known. An unfortunate team nade comes in from Sid. So it's still Ultra holding on, basically to a full 60 so far with only 30 seconds left. Atlanta are now forced to make a decision. Do we rotate? Do we attack with this pressure? We're finding the kills. And they're able to actually finesse some of the scrap time as well. Clean eliminations for FaZe. And you saw Scrap coming off spawn was trying to get through Dumpster Alley to get to P2 first, but he was shut down immediately by a BZ. So 150 plays 124. FaZe already in position over towards new. It just comes down to do these players on the old time find a swift transition. This time, not so much. Toronto trying to contest early. Yeah, Toronto trying to contest early right through red, though. No one's going to go over the backside Dumpster hop up. They want to win these gunfights on the opposite side, and they start off with the initial two. Now a BZ has to try to finesse. You got to dance around the cafe. Doesn't dance for long. Inside is able to take him down. An instant break coming in from Ultra. Big moment in this first map right here, right now. Ultra trying to get themselves in their preferred setup. Inside able to assist, but draws a simp following up. FaZe could still absolutely fly forward and hit this, but it's scrapped for the double. A quick hold for Ultra, and that will push FaZe looking at rotation, and it just really comes down to can Ultra finish this time off? A prime time to take a listen into their cops. Could be one more. I'm holding right. Could be mid alley. Could be one more. Mid so. Could be third. It's about about all. I'm only holding right. One. Yeah, I'm That's holding right. Can I spawn next to me? It's gonna spawn next to you. Mid alley, mid alley. Okay, okay. I'll pitch me up, pitch me up. They're gonna run at me here. Yeah, yeah, mid alley, mid alley. Mid, mid, that's time. Another time. I'm I'm hitting the back door, Ruffy. It's gonna be close. We put two, bro. Only one up. Back door. Dead. Could be right, Toby. Yeah, already right, I think. Yeah, yeah, already right. Huts, Huts. You get out. I have time. Huts is big, Dad. I'm mid alley. One more bike pinch right now. I'm mid, by the way. Okay. I hear you. Could be there. Could be there. Yeah, we're looking for one. I'm looking dirt. If Draws is dirt, Draws weak. I have a little bike, so you're gonna go top third. They're gonna hit me in the right. I'm shoulder. I'm right. I'm naked. Double nade. Double stick. Mid, mid alley. Mid alley. I can't hold mid alley. Mid alley dead. Mid alley dead. Okay. I have all mid. You're already on close him. You're gonna help. One shot, one shot, one shot. Throw the back there. Nice. Look at the back. Dirt. Nice. Let's get dirt Close to me. I think. I'm back. He's in the back door. I push. He's in the back door. Just hold. I'm out. Sit down now. Take a side now. We got the wall. Another one. Nice. 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 And then fucking two times. We're still there? No, wait, wait. Oh, uh, no, nah, I think he's shot up there. Yo, listen, I'm gonna pinch dirt off hold, okay? It's not too weak. 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 Every kill you get, they're gonna yeah. spawn out behind you guys. Yeah, spawn sap. Top, top chop out. He's top long. Hey, bedroom. Give me a sec. I might be able to pinch. Yeah, yeah. Two chop church. Two chop church. Like I got one. Nice. One more B. Top church. Oh, B. Oh, that's dead. B. Top church. One time. Okay, set the time. Set the time. I'm seeing it. All funny dirt. It's child. Top, 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 top. Bottom two. Top, 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 right corner up top. Like close. That's probably close. They could be French. Yeah. Set on me. One more on top. One more on top. One more on top. Nice. Three. Come on, Break coming through for Toronto. A key moment as the third hard point was near flawless. And now a chance to really get close to that 250 mark. And Ultra, they are making the right plays. As soon as we jump into the listen, and they gain the remaining junk time off the cafe, but they hit that rotation over towards P3, and that's what blows the wide open. And then when you find a break in towards Fountain, which is very difficult to do, you're just getting closer and closer to the finish line. It's just one more play. One more set of kills can close it out this next hit. Oh, big double from Sip. Keeps Hotel, at least in the name for Atlanta for now, but not for. 
boy in the new hill opens up and creates a bit of a problem here that phase have to deal with oh my goodness fun with doors featuring Hanboy there for a moment but Atlanta pick up the elimination and now they've got all four members ready to go for the hard point now if you are ultra just take your time use your tax blow up a couple of trophies great vision right there from scrap to set it up finds the first kill does get taken now so no cruise missile gonna be earned but right now the tack uses from Atlanta phase is just slowing down ultra but the guns are and on with a big kill on Obizi he's trying to find the second cannot on Tadraza but they are in and they can still close it out here Atlanta still reinforcing for the front side scrap trying to keep everyone at arm's reach but their trades will be through Atlanta have to find a way to cut through this hard point the stuns again continue to land Envoy now last one remaining trying to value his life but not going to be able to do it 200 to 240 scrap time going to Atlanta we're going back to rubble and it's all about the rotation and ultra put themselves in a great position you have top three you had fountain control you just have to put someone in towards the point Kleenex is there for the trade but right now it's Atlanta phase coming out on top of these engagements that's now three dead scrap has to make something happen waiting for help taking a tally of what's in the hard point sent down low only able to survive for so long and the first three kills go the way of Toronto it has to be a break from Draza 243 to 214 Abizi's name gets there but can he actually follow up on it last couple of seconds are in and Ultra will find a way to masterclass the second set to take map one Best hardpoint team that we have in the game, and they show it there. It was such a nail-biting hardpoint until we got to the second half of this game. Even though you give up a lot of time to Atlanta phase around that P1, Ultra were more focused on being the first team to complete a chain of two hardpoints yep. in this game. And it was the cafe to the P3 hill. You, go, you put yourself up by at least 30 to 40 points, and then when you find that break in towards Fountain, you just keep the game scrappy. And usually in these final moments, Atlanta phase got a different gene yep. But yesterday, in both the hardpoints that they played versus Optic, in those final moments, they did not clutch up. And when you're playing against the best hardpoint team in the game, they have that inside of them and they take map number one. It's a really interesting scoreboard as well because all weekend long we've been shouting from the highest of rooftops Kleenex and what he's been able to do in yeah. respawn. He was held at bay here, only getting 15 and of course just the 3200 damage. So for Atlanta, if you're putting that into your game plan, mission accomplished. But I really do believe we have to go back to that second rotation at that diner hard point because there was the late decision for FaZe to try to break through the final 15 seconds and then they completely miss out on third. That felt like where the game really changed. That's what a fundamentals needed to be in play because that was the game changer. You're talking about 20 to 25 seconds left in towards Cafe. You send three players towards the old hill. I know it's good to get that time, but a full 60 is way better yeah. on the opposite end. And unfortunately, that decision comes back to bite them. And now you're going into a search and destroy where they can rely on it. It's been their bread and butter. That's what's been getting them through a lot of series. We saw it yesterday. But Toronto Ultra are not no slouches in that oh, no, no, no. I know that's currently their worst game mode, but they're on a four-game search and destroy win streak. And it's versus some of the best SD teams that we currently have in the game, other than Atlanta Phase. We're talking about Seattle. We're talking about New York. And the way Seattle were playing search and destroy, it got them all the way to a top six. So you best believe Toronto Ultra have been putting in the work. 100%. And I think on top of that, of course, the desk have been talking about it. We've been talking about it a lot in the green room. You know, is Toronto actually going to be the most elite hard point team maybe we've ever seen in this EDL? Because like you mentioned, they were sweeping everyone completely out of the water. But here, Atlanta putting together a good fight, yet still, it just feels like Ultra's decision making is going to be a staple for them no matter how long this series goes. And that's not just going to exist in respawn. We expect that to also show up in the search. Yeah, it has to show up in the search because the map that they're going into next is an invasion. Yeah. They've only played it one time and they lost it in the beginning of the year to LAT all the way in a 6-5 fashion. But as you take a look at the game flow, you can tell. Just back and forth. When you have yeah. two Titans going at it, this is what it's going to look like. But when it started to pull away, was that P2 to P3. You find a break at P4. You keep it scrappy at P5. You set up properly and get the right kills at the right time to close the game out at that P1 HP. Just they don't make mistakes when you talk yep. about that hard point game. Yeah, I mean, what, 18 points for Atlanta compared to the 80 points that Toronto yeah. were able to get in that yeah. stretch? Yeah, huge moment right there. Okay, so now let's really take the conversation deep dive in towards this invasion search and destroy. Again, statistically speaking, even though Toronto have a couple of search and destroy map losses, those losses have come in round nine or beyond. Yeah. We're on the other side. Atlanta is going to be looking at this with their mouths watering. 5-0 and on invasion search, and they have been unbelievable playing around the objective on both sides of the bomb. And the crazy thing 
thing is, we saw it on full display yesterday. It's just the way that they are able to read the map, read the setups of the opposing teams. And when they do that, that's when they slowly start to work different routes, different plays come into play. You've seen Simp dropping bombs just so he can hit a certain route yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so Atlanta face has got to keep that bread and butter underneath the man to do. And on top of that, seeing the invasion also show up for the control. Both teams, again, have been good across just about every single map. But in particular, look at some of the numbers that this Atlanta face team is able to put into control. Hey, they're not just really great at defense, 14 and 5 overall, but their offense has also been super successful. And that has also been spotlighted throughout this weekend. Yeah, that's good, man. The good, the fact, the fact that you're able to win a couple offenses, we saw it yesterday on High Rise. They had some of the quickest attacking rounds. They got one dug win segments, and they also got them done in kills. So it's an all out square up when you talk about that control but we'll get to that later as we look at the matchup on this invasion more specifically obviously Atlanta phase are sitting at 5-0 but there's a lot of odds that you can go back and watch a lot of plays that you can read and I feel like the players that need to be able to shut down the aggressive players on the opposite side for Atlanta I'm really looking at Kleenex to shine here I like that and you see that one in five attack win loss record the other factor of this is that Toronto has not yet planted the bomb at all okay, so well. that is going to have to be I think focus number one here for Ultra when we see them on the offensive side where for Atlanta, the numbers, you can find them in any form on any side. So let's see. Can we see Atlanta bounce back? Use their best map mode combination as a way to tie up this series. Again, winners finals here in Boston. And we're loading on in for the invasion search to destroy a lot of focus here towards if Atlanta could just come out swinging and put Toronto down early. And I think if you're Atlanta, this is a must win search to destroy. It's a square when you talk about the control, but this has been your game mode all season. You need to be able to respond. And they're going to be the team on defense early on, but you know there's no trophy system into play, so Ultra can take advantage if they want to use their attacks to try to take them off of this tank, but you already see the positioning ground. Sip has found his way into Broken. Ango checks it. Oh, that's great information. Takes the battle with the pistol, backs off. Not a lot of help here initially from Kleenex, but they do have Sip trapped. There's the gunfight. Oh, my goodness. The fact that he chooses to step into the smoke for the battle, unreal. Envoy does confirm the trade. We'll go 3v3. 3v3 now. Abizi on the opposite side of the map, though, is able to take down Scrap. So now it's a 3v2. Envoy and Kleenex, the SMGs for the Ultra. 45 seconds left. They have some information on where Draza is playing. You know that Abizi just got a kill by that A site, but you don't know yet where Selium is, and he's going to be the assist man over towards that B bomb. That nade actually confirms that Cell should still stay on this side of the map. A little tag over towards what looked to be Envoy, the bomb carrier. 25 seconds remaining. How do Ultra make a decision? It looks like they're going to try to rewrap and really just isolate a BZ. Good kill comes through. Cell on the wrap, making it to the cross, at least somewhat contested. Sees Kleenex towards the bomb, but doesn't see Envoy on the cross. So this bomb's going to get planted. That timing right there from Selim is not the best, but it's now going to be a 2v2. You had Draza going a deep pinch. But look at the spot right now from Kleenex. I don't know if Selim's going to be able to spot him. This has got to be good contact here for Cell. Kleenex laying prone. He pops up, finds the first contact, but similarly so, Draza able to turn this into a 1v1. Kleenex, the rewrap back. 27 seconds on the clock. Draza holding firmly over the top Ooh. shots. Oh, evenly exchanged. Both players down low. Draza tries to force the gunfight. And it's Ultra who win the elimination and the first round. Oh, that's a big 2v3 as well. Talking about Envoy starting it off by taking down Abizi onto the site, but just multiple times right there. Selling was getting bad timing. He was able to spot Envoy Cross with that bomb. He probably plays it a little bit different, more aggressive. But once it turns into a 1v1, Kleenex throws a shoulder. He's able to get out with his life. But Reeves draws it like a book. And that leads to Toronto taking the first. Huge. Already talking about their lack of success offensively. Yeah. They get the bomb down, and they hold. So job well done here for Toronto to start things off. Atlanta's now first opening attempt on their offense and the biggest thing about them offensively speaking is that they have been unbelievable they hold 90 percent of their post plants when they get the bomb down that has to be a focus yeah if you want to run ultra just don't let that bomb go down we know how difficult it is to retake <laughs> yeah. but only a minute left in this round two two split right now from atlanta face draws and simps slowly trying to work their way up through Vulcan, but you see Toronto Ultra, they only have one player calling out information on that side of the map. They're trying to set up those aggressive SMGs to time these flanks. And what timing does Envoy have to get activated? You've got Kleenex kind of establishing a threat over towards Dark, but there's Envoy through DVD. They just completely miss him on the setup. And now all of a sudden, Simp is trapped. He needs help. Cell is stuck on the other side of the map. This is essentially a 2v3 in the B side. Scrap knows. Scrap knows that Cell loves to go for that deep flank. So he's going to continuously hold down to this right street. But there's only 35 seconds left. Atlanta has to get a move on it. They just can't take down the King Prince. 
out two on the round. 4v2 left up to Simp and Cell. And Simp is still stuck. Cell just cannot get back across the map. Simp would have to do it all himself, and he's just stuck between a rock and a hard place. Nowhere to go. Sheer perfection from Ultra's first defensive setup. And you can just tell that they watched that VOD yesterday. They yes, know sir. that Cellium always likes to be the island player. Whenever they're attacking B, he's slowly working up alongside Street so you can go for that deep flank and catch a couple players on the back end. But Scrap was not budging. He knew that he was on that side of the map, but it all falls into the hands of Envoy. The fact that he puts himself in that position in towards DVD, finds the first and it eventually finds a second onto a BZ. Already job well done for Moultrie. A lesson in discipline as well, because yeah. he doesn't even make first nor second contact. It's his teammates from the front that enable him to make the play. So Envoy at five and one through two rounds. Mercy. Faze setting up their next defense. Bit of aggression here from Abizi playing just a little bit cheeky on the A side of the map. Help from Selium beyond as Ultra have barely left spawn and somehow still find first blood. It's a big first blood onto Draza. Now you know that that's the guy who watches over B. We just have to clear our broken because that's where Synth likes to play, but they're not even going to contest that side of the map. Going to force a couple players from Atlanta phase. Hit that early rotation over towards B as you see Cell give up that right street and that's the opening for Ultra to hit the go button. Big 1v1 for ABZ. Follow up good though. Quick from Toronto to capitalize on the trade. And they're immediately turning that into a bomb plant. You still have Insight floating over towards the B side of the map. He's missed this defensive rotation though. So Simp gets us back to a 2v2. Kleenex looking for an angle to catch this trade. Hasn't seen anything as of yet, and both Ultra players are on an island. Yeah, they're just waiting. They're just waiting to see how many flanks are going to be abound, but Kleenex takes down the first. If he can find this kill, that's his cruise missile going to be earned. But it's still Ultra walking away with the W. On the back of Insight, finding that first blood. Even though Abizi does get the trade, they were instantly there to respond. I feel like that's something I said all of Atlanta yesterday. Oh, yeah, Always absolutely. there for the trade, but this time it's Ultra leading 3-0. And just such quick trust, especially in that last 2v2. Both players completely isolated from one another. Huge follow-ups on both sides. Big 1v1 gunfight to start things off. And a 3-0 tally. I mean, come on. I'll tell you right now, you take down these big dogs in SD the way that they've been having yeah. recently. It's been 6-2 or better for Ultra and all their final four, their last four SDs. But back to the defensive side they go. Atlanta, around this point mm. of the game is when they start to make those mid-round adjustments. You know what Ultra like to do. Two players towards B, two players towards A. Let's stack one side and push out and be aggressive. A lot of vacancy over towards this waterside street. Scrap gets back into position a bit late. So he, yep, him and Sully, him going at it once again. Faze still looking for some space through mid-map. Nade's getting cooked up. This is all going over towards mid tape. You see Kleenex position. This is a beautiful look at it. He can watch all of this cross without even being under threat. I didn't even know that this. That's an angle. He's on top of the flower pot. Puts down a couple shots, but now you got to back down. And then at least Envoy has all the info. It's not going to be over towards B. So the rest of Toronto Ultra are stacking around this A point. But with only 40 seconds left, Atlanta got to get a move on the objective. Oh, lots of shots from Draza, but Kleenex, oh, nearly able to get out, but does get collected by Simp. Long range shots from Scrap, has a lot of Cellium. I mean, my goodness, that was painful. 23 seconds on the clock, bomb will be planted. Long route from Envoy, he's got his daddy popped, and he is going, I mean, he's taking the scenic route. He is deep towards gas. Yeah, I think the first kill he wants to focus on is taking down Cellium. You open oh. that right street, that's enough, but Scrap at least finds one. Abizi there for the trade. Envoy. Now puts himself in a position to take down some instant 2v2 with 30 seconds. Insight still holding over towards the eighth side of the map. 25 seconds to go. Phase locked in hand in hand around this freezer side. And they're not giving Ultra a chance at a long range gunfight. Cell him able to find Envoy. Now it's just down to searching out where Insight's position. Cell will confirm the intel. Abizi just throwing shoulders, making sure, nope, you're not going to hop on this bomb. Has to force the gunfight. And now no more time for the defuse. Atlanta going to get on the board. Atlanta slowly working on their attack. They like to take their sweet time when you talk about putting that bomb down, but once they find that kill onto Kleenex through mid courtyard, they know that that's the farthest guy pushed up. Now we can put the bomb down, make sure we watch our deep flank, and then even when it turns into a 2v2, it's still the teamwork on full display in towards the cafe. And Sullivan watches over one, finds the first, and then the BZ with the shoulders. Just make sure that defuse is not happening. Atlanta finally put one on the board. Big round right there, too, because if that one goes awry, you start to get in your head a little bit. Of, yeah. How are Ultra finding all this space to work with? I mean, come on. feels like everything's being challenged. So a chance to reset the momentum. Maybe even the patterns in the game. Stuns, keeps it easy from going any further forward through dark. And he's got to kind of forfeit any advancements as he just holds this position looking for crossing corners. He's just playing for early info. 
He should have just got spotted by Envoy. Actually, now with him putting down a couple shots, position now known. And Draza this time around is not going to be super aggressive up towards B, wow. but Sip with the crossfire finds the first blood onto Kleenex. Huge cover because Kleenex was literally right behind him, easy. So 4v3 situation, Ultra still holding the bomb on the other side of the map. Scrap has to come join this effort. Simp just looking to see if he can catch somebody over the top of the half wall, but at the moment, Faze comfortable in their setup, all things told. Yeah, and I'm curious if Ultra were watching the crossover's bomb, because if you didn't spot Draza, crossover towards the backside of Tractor, you should try to take this tank control, especially as he's playing from a deep angle. You just want to time this correctly with only 30 mm. seconds left. This is where the push is going to be, and you already see the SMGs from Atlanta Faze setting up those pinches. BC gets through DVD Alley. Hasn't seen anything as of yet. Insight able to check. Pushes him off. Bomb now being planted. Also, the threat for Simp through Dark has been established. Bomb planted, 43 seconds on the clock. How do you set up this retake? It's not going to happen by Self. Draws a lot of damage, but can't confirm any eliminations. You've got both ARs kind of searching down anyone over towards the B side of the map, and BZ can't get through. This post plant is holding. Shots into Simp. He has to take cover. Envoy finishes off the elimination. Scrap right behind him. And of course, they know where a BZ is. No chance to get that retake off. Ooh, it's cool and calm from Ultra. And Atlanta Faze are usually really successful on retakes on this map. 90% overall, especially when they find the first blood, it's basically 100. But the setup right there for Ultra, the crossfires, knowing how aggressive Atlanta were going to try to be in those situations. You cut down a BZ on the flank. Now you have to slow him down. Draza tries to go for a one-on-one. -on -one. He loses that gunfight to Scrap. And then once it turns into a 3v3, Scrap just stays alive. He knows that his teammates watching over him on the left side. Inside has the deep flank. Just a perfect post-plant setup right there for Ultra to secure the round. Four. 4-1. Atlanta have to have this. You cannot go down 5-1 against how Ultra's played to this point. And you need to do it with some conviction if I'm being completely candid. Four-man stack over towards the B side of the map, but Ultra, really, realistically speaking, are they're here. They're ready for this. You see the positioning of Scrap. He's just sitting nice and sweet in towards the middle of the tank. He's just waiting for Atlanta face to be aggressive up through broken, and then it's your time to attack, but they all come to a stale. Smoke now is going to get invested, so now the pressure is here. Envoy with the first. Oh, and Insight just laying prone, and oh. Fingal almost doubles up. A chance for FaZe to fight this back, but the bomb has been dropped. And you can see the cause for concern. FaZe is continually looking behind them, saying, is anyone on our flank? Because that's been a recipe for success for Ultra so much this map. You're getting all the info with a great shoulder right there from Scrap, so now it's time to wrap back, play with our teammate Buddy Buddy System. Uh, Kleenex works that deep pitch, but Scrap's under fire. Scrap and Envoy, they combine to at least find one, but now it's all left up to a BZ 1v2. And they still haven't seen Kleenex yet. You still have no idea where he's positioned. So BZ trying to maybe isolate an individual gunfight with him, but isn't going to find the opportunity to even locate him in any regard. And look at the rotation back. Scrap is ready to move to A if he needs to. Abizi finally catches the opponent he was looking for. Quick to hop on for the plant. We're going to get extended 1v1. This is a beautiful play from Abizi so far. Bomb is now going to get planted, but does Scrap spot him on the exit? I don't know if Abizi saw him, but the shots from Scrap. <laughs> the rookie of the year last year. We know he's going to have some chirping, but you went on one-on-one -on -one versus Abizi. Do not put your team at game point in the search and destroy. All the adjustments are coming in. They are just prepared every single time yeah. Atlanta Faze are trying to attack towards B. They said that's their bread and butter bomb site. They slowly work it with about 30 seconds left. But if we shut down that B play, the only attacking round, the only round that they have a W in is when they plan it over towards A. It's been a perfect game plan so far from Toronto Ultra. Now at game point. And the thing is, it's not just been just an overall perfect game plan when Ultra is looking at this map, but they fought off three first bloods from Simp to this point. So yep. they're doing it in 3v4s. And a lot of that is, I think, just credit to the fact that they're trading so darn quickly. We talked about it a lot yesterday. FaZe is one of the hardest teams to trade in the league, but hasn't been an issue yet for Ultra. And now they found themselves at game point. Scrap on a four streak. All lot pressure in towards the cafe. You're going to force BZ to back on down. But look how aggressive they are up the middle of the map. You take down BZ. Now you work this bomb plant. And if Scrap can find another one, you basically call game. And just knowing how Sullyan plays, he's not going to work his way up a street. He goes back to find a forward kill on towards Scrap, but the clock is ticking on this retake. 3v3. Two players for FaZe still completely on the wrong side of the map. This is going to take years to develop. Ultra very comfortable in the setup, and they're fully really prepared for the flank. Now down to 26 seconds. First shot's good from Kleenex. Zipper on the back, not quite able to find the train. It's oh. inside to meet him. Just down to sell. 1v3 situation. Oh, and it's getting nervy. 15 seconds on the clock, nowhere to go. How about your Toronto Ultra? Oh my goodness. Man.
man, oh man, I was not expecting <laughs> that. We're talking about a can of whoop ass in search and destroy versus a team like Atlanta Phase. They were 11 and one in the mode. Then that puts them 11 and two. But if we were questioning who was the big dog in the league, everyone was saying Atlanta Phase, undefeated. Unbelievable map count. But they haven't played these guys on the opposite side. Right now, the teamwork from Toronto Ultra is top tier. Crossfires galore. Every time a trade is there, they are instantly there to find on themselves on top in the engagements to beat the way that, to clutch up in the map one, but to dominate the way that they did in this map number two. I like Ultra, one of the best control teams we have in the game as well. This yeah. potentially is going to be a 3 0. Lights out, dude. It's one of those situations where Ultra's like, oh, FaZe, you've been cooking up on Invasion? We're coming over for dinner, and we're staying for breakfast the next morning. <laughs> invasion Control coming up next, like we already talked about, both teams pretty much equal when it comes to how they approach Control, in particular on Invasion. But, boy, I'll tell you, the mental gymnastics that we've gotten out of Ultra to this point have to have FaZe in an absolute tizzy. Yeah, and I know everybody in the crowd, including us, we are not expecting this. When no. two Titans go at it, one is better in Hardpoint, one is better in Search and Destroy. But when you watch... A VOD of they have been playing it five different times. You're going to get a tendency of what they start to do. And it was just a perfect game plan, like I said, from Toronto Ultra to now be up 2 well. Makes the analysis part very easy of our job <laughs> to this point. We'll see if things will change. Phase down and they're down big. Ultra, a lot of questions on if they've really been tested to this point. And well, it doesn't matter who they face up against. Seems like at the moment, doesn't make much of a gathering distance at all. Here we go. Coming back for control. Back side break. Start the season strong with the Call of Duty League Pack. Grab yourself the CDL Operator, Weapon Blueprint, and so much more. Check out the Call of Duty store in-game now. The Painted Alabrije bundle is available now in the Call of Duty store. Inspired by the folk art of Oaxaca, this stunning bundle offers colorful, vibrant, and mythical items you gotta check out.
the Kings in the North looking like they very well maybe put themselves in a prime position to be Kings in the ZDL to start things off. It's all Toronto to this point, and that's been just another major surprise. We were, had the pleasure of watching Toronto and New York play. We thought that was going to be a banger in the online series, and it was a beatdown. This one showing some similar shades. That was the first 100-point club that we've had all season. I'm pretty sure it's still the only 100-point only one. club yep. that we had, and it was Toronto versus another top team, which is the third seed going into this event. They handed New York with ease. Now they find themselves up two in the series. All confidence, everything. Momentum is all on Toronto's side. You do what you need to do. You take the map one, but the fact that you just beat them down the way that you did in that search and destroy, and now you're going into another respawn game yeah. where they're basically tied. They're both sitting at a 7-2 record. They're both 8-1 on the defenses. It just simply comes down to who can get more segments or who can walk away with an attacking round. And both teams extremely proficient at being able to win offensive rounds yeah. by capture. Yep. So that will be pivotal as we spawn into invasion control Atlanta on the opening offense. And Scrap has already graced us with a first blood at tremendous range. He gets one across the map, but a BZ answers with the MCW in hand as well. And I see Toronto Ultra just want to maintain, make sure that Atlanta face are not going to make anything happen over towards that A point. They hit that rotation over towards B. Full B side control. Clock comes with some pause. Yeah, the BZ playing deep means that he's got to be the first one to get taken care of as Ultra try to set up some sort of a retake. Lots of focus for Ultra through mid-map, but you can see the stuns, the nades, all trying to find where has a BZ gone. And he's still, no one has any idea where he's positioned while the second tick of progress is being worked on. There he goes, pops up, eventually taken care of, but that second tick already done and dusted. Yeah, still Atlanta face coming out on top in the trade, so simply is able to stay alive, but he gets pegged in the body with the frag. It takes him down, at least a scrap. Unfortunately, take it down inside, but at least you have some broken control. But for how long? The fact that Kleenex was able to read that play is insane <laughs> to me, but Draza still stays alive. Back on the B point we go. Yeah, good clearance coming out of BZ, able to find that elimination. This should surely be the B zone as simultaneously. Selium is able to establish a little bit of pressure towards A. Nothing to fret about yet if you're Toronto, but at least it gives Atlanta some space to come off spawn and try to work a quick transition. Now you got two minutes to work with, up by two lives. We already have players pushed up around that mid-map control. You see Draza trying to sneak his way through back blue, but Toronto Ultra in a crucial position right here. Very tight around this setup, around that eight point. You need to make these gunfights worth it. Ultra still looking for some zoning as well. The problem is Envoy getting taken down mid-map means that FaZe can very quickly try to break entry. Pistol out for Sip. Insight gives up the zone, then comes right back to it, but doesn't make a difference. The Renetti too strong. Sip now in. A little bit of assistance from Abizi on the other side, but Scrap Envoy finding a couple of kills means that Ultra can go to re-clear. Stunned into place. Abizi eventually dealt with, and Ultra will reclaim 16 plays 16. That's a clean four dead, and they don't allow that segment to also get complete. So now you can put him in a nice little trap. Insight holding down the Right street. We have made courtyard control as well. Selium does take down one, but full map control right now for the Ultra. You just gotta continue to wind down that clock. Let it keep cutting down, keep trading efficiently. Really interesting idea here from Ultra. They've kind of given up playing around A Street. Maybe just Ooh. to know that FaZe likes to play this through the captured B zone. Good gunfight win from Draza. Keeps this play potentially alive. Envoy throwing out a couple of the shots, but now that threat over towards A being so vacant means that Envoy's got to watch everything all at once. First shots to sell him, decent, but can't finish the kill. Now you've got two FaZe members in. First tick already gone. Scrap, he's able to actually walk forward and possibly contest this, but Sip and Selium finding the kills, and now the stack is good for the second tick. Third quickly on the way, and and that's absolutely it. Kills still coming through, and FaZe will take our first offense. That's a big round right there from Atlanta FaZe. You find all the kills at the right time, but I thought Toronto Ultra still had an opportunity to break it. I would have liked to see Envoy commit to that cross. You spot Selium, you get him one shot, but you don't spot a BZ as well. So that double stack comes in. Envoy plays a couple cutoff kills. He doesn't find that first one, and then eventually it leads to Atlanta getting a clean four dead. Now they have the cross watch, and they walk away with the first attack of this map. Bit bizarre as well, I think, just kind of as the B-Zone was captured, the OE, not to be this time around. So a key first offensive win comes through for Atlanta. Kleenex just a single kill in the defensive effort as Ultra swap the sides, and their early intentions are to try to work up A Street to get in early. Yeah, they have the trophy system this time around, so going to try to maneuver their way up to the long street. They at least have one player in towards the point. Envoy trying to stay alive. He sets up Kleenex for the second. That's wow. already three dead. Make wow. it all four. Ultra said, all right, you take an attacking round. We'll do it better. We're going to take A first and then rotate over towards B. Second segment already done. Draza going to give this a look, but he's tagged up. Third tick already through. Two minutes and 15 seconds on the clock. Phase just now finally getting their first kills as we take our attention back over to B. And now if you are a Kleenex and Scrap, just stay pushed out the way that you are. 
You're getting those spawns over towards the street side, so you have to try to go for an overextension. You don't want to wrap back and fight these players at Tractor, fight these players at Cage. You want to try to set up a couple spawn kills, and that's what they're trying to do, but Draz and Selim combined for two. They hold strong in their first defensive hold. Stun comes out. Abizi's position now known. Two members for Ultra trying to hunt him out. There's the cross. Abizi gets the first. Not bad overall. Plus the trades to follow. Good news here for FaZe. Insight's still existing through the middle of the map, but largely speaking, FaZe getting a good start to this defensive beat. Yeah, and Insight's just holding this cross. He's going to allow his teammates to spin up towards the tank, get your trophy down, and slowly work your way up through the front end. But they are not finding any kills. That's another three dead in the feed. You are on ball. You got to slow it down. Yeah. Just make sure no one crosses up to that tank. So you can allow your teammates to get out of the spawn, but Atlanta Face is doing a great job just holding down this setup around this B point. I feel like anytime you see McArthur in a position okay. like this, he's usually good for a handful, but stops me dead in my tracks as Scraps able to find the quick kill, and with that Ultra now, stop the clock as they jump on towards B. Draza trying to find someone to take care of, but not going to happen. It's all four members on, and oh, okay, <laughs> that B zone is off to the races. Second tick done. Third one on the way. Two trophies still existing, and it's done. Wow. These are some lightning <laughs> offenses. That's just too easy for Ultra. The fact that they are knowing exactly what the game plan is. We're wrapping back. We're going to make sure we take this guy down tractor. You do a great job of that. And then even when they go three dead, the last player up is always playing his life. And he plays it so well to allow his teammates to get back to him. And then they start the fight again. When they found those initial two kills, the two players who found the kills were the two trophy players. You get both of those down with only two players from Atlanta Bays <laughs> still alive on that side of the map. Those tacks are not going to be useful. The other two guys are already off spawn. The stack comes in and ultra respond with an attacking round and just the awareness in the first place to say hey everybody jump onto this zone we've got the clearance to do it here we go again right off the get-go atlanta already find draza in the a zone selling him to try to assist no trophy system for draza as of yet so he's just trying to survive for as long as humanly possible problem is he's just hoping his teammates could cover his cross oh and Salim unfortunately falls so now the pressure is going to be here for ultra at least the team kills does come in but that segment does not get complete at that a point now you're forced to hit that early rotation over towards B, but they do not have a problem with it. Abizi with the SMG, up close and personal onto Strap, able to pause the clock, but you already see Simp taking ground. Good isolation onto Envoy, slips away, turn it! Oh, 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 oh. Takes care of Scrap cleanly. So that's going to be enough for the first tick, plus more to follow here as FaZe have full control at B. Ultra trying to win back the middle of the map, but now they run into Abizi's SMG. Finally dealt with, but it comes at a steep cost. Second tick gets locked. JC Toronto, though, they just want to make sure they're killing everyone out of their base before they apply that pressure over towards B. They still have not yet located. Draza finally Scrap takes him down. So now you know, the last person who was on the point just finished capturing it. We have been map control. We can start to be aggressive up on the map. You already see Kleenex in a position. If his team can get a couple kills and a small trap. Envoy opposite door of Abizi. Help nearby, though, for FaZe as this transition starts to gain some momentum. 2-2 two, two split defensively at the moment for Ultra. First one found, but not collected. Envoy able to get punished, so Atlanta can still keep this forward pressure towards a big gunfight here. And as Draza drops, the last hope for FaZe to try to get onto A now would come down to Simp, and he's going to wait. Yeah, he's just going to back on up. You don't want to try to be a one-man army on that A street, and eventually Kleenex sniffs him out. It's so already 30 seconds knocked off the game clock. Envoy, next line of defense. He does get traded, but they know exactly where Atlanta phase are applying the pressure from. You have him in map control. You have the overextension. We know what that guy does. He's going to find a two-piece. He's going to chirp a little bit. And that leads to still Atlanta phase coming in the back of their base. Tons of time still remaining for phase, but you got to work through this deadlock play at mid at some point in time. Cell still not even bothering to play over towards Water Street as of yet, but that may be the only option here is this ultra setup over through mid. It's just not getting supplanted at all. Finally, Cell makes his presence known, but Scrap deals with it swiftly. 17 plays, 14, but Atlanta do get some clearance at mid. Oh, and Atlanta finally found a couple kills as well. So you get a close spawn, but the next gunfight is crucial. Insight takes down Simp. Now the positioning of a PC. He's going to try to be the playmaker, but unfortunately can't find that kill. And Leads him eventually getting it, but it's still Ultra. Knowing his positioning now, you get the trade, you're still holding on. Trades go back and forth. Back to an 11, plays 11. 34 seconds on the clock, okay. and there's four dead. Okay, now you've got Cell on to stop the clock at 33. Scrap should be able to contest this cross. Kleenex also working on a spawn, but there are a couple of the members on for phase. First tick lock. Scrap the first one to challenge. Clears his left, and now it's just down to if he can find the phase members deeper into the point. Kleenex with one trade, but not the second. Follow-up coming through, though, and that'll be enough as Ultra will get the full clearance and stop the second tick. And with only 30 seconds left, this is the last push. It's going to be the front runner to try to make it happen, but Scrap takes him down. Everyone's spawning all the way across the map. If you are Ultra, just sit a corner and this round is yours.
Is there any opportunity to just gut check fly at this A zone? No kills as of yet. Stuns also making this very laborious for FaZe. Trades coming out, five seconds on the clock, and no one anywhere near the A point. Lives were also getting tremendously low, but huge hold from Ultra to get their first defense. Big round from Ultra. They shut down that early A pressure. And then they also give up that B point. They do not have a problem setting up for two minutes around A. Every time the opening was there for Atlanta phase, you always found scrap in the position. Insight cutting down that right street and then Envoy and Kleenex through the middle of the map. Just always trading efficiently. Now puts Toronto at game point, back on the attacking side. And if you are Toronto, you're down by four segments. That's something you have to keep in the back of your mind. Sure, absolutely. And I think the thing is, do you just go back to what was tried and true the first round? You, I mean, it was with trophies, just getting on towards eight early. Phase committing a couple extra numbers this time to make sure this A defense is a bit more resounding. Okay, first couple of kills pretty much put A out of the question, unless Envoy can keep things stretched together. Off spawn, though, Ultra taking their attention back over to B. Envoy still staying on the spree now, four in a row. That's a big read. That's a big read right there from Envoy. Now, Atlanta Phase could not hit that early rotation over towards B, so you can stack that point. Envoy finds three in a row. Can't find the one for the cruise missile. So now it's Selium holding down that right street, but not for long. Great shots from Insight. There's only one player wow. on the point. All the kills right now going in favor of Ultra. Insight trying to take two things, two tasks trying to get done as he works towards A as well. And the longer he doesn't see anyone cross over towards the same street, the more he can transmit information that, hey, keep your heads up as far as how Atlanta want to try to focus over towards B. It's Draza from behind for a double. That keeps the third tick safe. And at the same time, the clock ticks down to the old 20 seconds. And you see Insight on the minimap. He's just thinking someone from Atlanta Page has to be on this right side because his teammates are contested. They have a lot of fights over towards Brooklyn. But finally, when he makes his decision to go, Selium is ready for him. So all of Ultra in the back of the spawn, complete two segments over that B. But if you want that defense, you got to close this one yeah. out and work your way towards A. Good kills from FaZe. Next hit, largely just down to get scrap, make a mess of this setup. In trouble, back to the pistol, trying to stall out as long as wow. possible. Insight behind him, scrap now getting a bit of regen. What weapon do you want, brother? How about none of them? Tries to go to the beatdown. Ultra able to support the play, and with that, an extra 60 gets down. And they have street control as well. Insight in a crucial position if he can find at least one kill. Kleenex through the middle of the map. He already found three in a row. He's trying to assist Insight. He knows that one's on the fire truck. Gets some timing, but he still comes out on top. Now it's just a bomb boy in the pinch, but he gets red off spawn. A minute and 22. Ultra up by one life. Got a couple cracks at this one. But FaZe are kind of put with their backs against the wall here. They are fully pushed back either into the zone or backside gas. Scrap cleared out through laundry. Gives FaZe a little bit of extra cushion. One tick needed for the ultra defense. Otherwise, we're looking at lies if it ends up being tied. A BZ able to shut down Envoy. So the next hit immediately eliminated from ultra. Yeah, and I don't think ultra in a position right now to just play for one tick. You're playing for a clean four deck yeah. so you can get the stack in with only 50 seconds left. Every gunfight is so crucial in this moment. Information now gaining. Kleenex starts it off with the first. 40 seconds on the clock. This is actually a 4v2 in front of the zone. You've got a long cross from Draza, but if he doesn't connect, you're going to let Ultra just walk right on in. Oh, but a big follow-up gunfight for BC. Takes care of Scrap at mid. Here's Simp trying to follow up as the first tick of progress. Nearly locked in, but the nade comes through in phase once again deplete. They don't allow that segment to get away from them. Atlanta, no, we can't give up four. We're not going to have defense. But this is the final push, the final hoorah coming in from Toronto Ultra. Three players up through the street, and Simp gives them a freebie, so now you can push right on up and get in this point if you want. And FaZe has to rotate quickly. They were so worried about an OE play coming through that now you've got two players from Ultra oh. on it to beat down Bash over towards the old P1. Kleenex over the top, stunned up, and the kills continue to come through for FaZe. Oh, they were getting tied. They were getting tested. But ultimately, the defense looks good for the hold as the follow-up kills come through. A seven-life gap as well. And all things start to point towards FaZe continuing to play on defense as we head to a round five. And Atlanta FaZe end this round on a 17 streak. Some players potentially earning towards some cruise missiles into this round number five, but you already did what you needed to do on your attacking side. Beat them in the segment column. Now you have that defense going into round five. You just can't go four dead right off the rip. Yeah. That's when Toronto Ultra had that success early on. They got a clean four dead. They stacked every player on that side of the map, and then you swung all the way across the map at Treehouse. You stand no chance. So it's all about the initial fights. You have to clutch up on these if you are Atlanta. Keep in mind the Toronto Ultra offense has pretty much fully focused off the get-go towards either A or at worst trying to control mid. Yeah. So does FaZe change their break off trying to match that or do they trust what they've already baked up for this particular match? If it doesn't work, 
They're down in the lower bracket to get a rematch versus Optic. And here comes Ultra. All four purple arrows looking over towards the A side of the map. First kill, good. Is there a follow? But BZ's kind of stuck. He has to take gunfights. Uh -oh. He gets stunned up. In sight, a little bit of damage comes through, but Kleenex finds the kill. And Ultra are going to find entry day. And Jaza can't peek right now. He only has one HP, so you don't want to give up your life for free. You're going to allow Ultra to get on in, but uh -oh. you have to clutch up in these fights. Trades are there, but it's still Ultra coming out on top. First segment about to be complete. BZ from laundry side. Cell clears things out a little bit. Here comes the double hit from the front, and Cell will clean things up completely. Off the respawn, Ultra will step foot over towards B, so still a lot of time on the clock, but FaZe have done their first job of making sure A stays safe. Oh, that's a big kill right there from Cellian because Kleenex, he was just trying to be a nuisance around Cafe. And now you know, everybody from Toronto Ultra had to commit over towards B. They're spawning on that side of the map. They get the initial two kills. His first segment about to be complete, but at the same time, Selium ended that last run out of three. He now finds himself on a seven with the cruise missile in the back pocket. Huge defensive advantage for FaZe, who look like they actually want to try to get this a go, and all the kills on the rebuttal. Absolutely <laughs> perfect. The Carther now on nine in a row, looking for double digits as now the spawn trap starts to become a problem for Ultra. This is, this is just one of those maps. This is one of those maps for Selium. 30 and 14. Trying to extend that kill streak up to 10. Right now, Ultra are so trapped. Every single oh. angle from Atlanta phase is being watched. They got them in the blender. Nades are going to hit sit, but you still don't find the kill. And there's only 35 seconds left. You got to get out. It feels terrible for Ultra. Absolutely miserable trying to work their way out of spawn as Atlanta continue to build up streaks across the board. You want to talk about a tone reset. We got it right here in round number five. Ultra sitting in the palace. Nowhere to go. Not a single kill to speak of. It's absolutely perfect from Atlanta. 13 seconds, last attempt for Ultra would have to be over towards B, and they're just simply not finding any kills. Oh seven streak God. for Draza, seven streak for Sim, double digits for MC. We're going to see a fourth map, friends. That was literally just 24 kills in a row. Atlanta Fays have multiple players in the right position, but once you get put in that trap, they did not give you any breathing room. They clutched up on the attack by gaining more segments. But then when you have your ARs posted up, Draza really turned up that map alongside Celium. They just shut down those lanes, and they stay alive in this series a little longer. Dirty, dirty stuff in that round five defense. And for a moment there, all right, the get-go, it looked like Ultra was going to get away with murder again over towards A. But Celium doesn't just end himself on a huge streak. He was also the culprit for shutting down that Ultra hit at A. So doing it all at the last moment when needed for Celium. 31 and 14, 5,500 damage. Sip gets nearly 7K. Yeah. Come on, put that's, a leash on this guy. That's what I was looking at. 7K damage. He's sitting at 26 and 26. That guy is always putting down shots. Peppering, peppering, putting down a... Making everybody one shot so his teammates find a couple freebies, and that's what sets up Selium to be who he is. Get those free kills, post up on the head glitch, end the game on a 10 streak, and then Draza holding down that B point as well. Just put them in a trap. Atlanta phase now. Stay alive in this series, but the only thing that really scares me now is the next map that they're playing. And that's sub base because Toronto Ultra, they have been beating teams down by a maximum 80 to 90 points every single time they spawn in on sub base. Yeah, it's definitely not fun to look at on paper, but I think the thing that really we walk away with here after a lot of great successful offenses again here from our top teams on Invasion is the fact that going to round five, knowing that Ultra are putting all this preference over towards A, you don't really change anything too dramatically. You're trusting the process, you're putting yourself in good spots. Spots, and you know that individually as well as cohesively between your teammates, you can deal with what Ultra's putting together. That same mentality though, Jay, has to be there when it comes to yes. sub base based on how they played Optic because it really didn't feel like it was. It has to be in hard points in general. We're talking about map number one. It was so back and forth, yeah. so back and forth. But the turning point in the game is when Ultra decided to play fundamentally correct. They gain a good 40 and then they hit that rotation to gain a 60 right on back. And for Atlanta Phase, we saw it on full display yesterday versus Optic. They were just consistently playing from the back foot. There's four out of five hills that you want to try to hold top three story. That's that side of the map. When you're forced to every single time off spawn, when you're spawning back P4 towards the back side of comms and overextend, it's just wasting a lot of time. And you have to make sure if you are landing phase, you are playing those fundamentals because we already know what inside does. If they're spawning on the back side, we're going right up long. We're playing to flip the spawns yeah. immediately. And that's the thing is we kind of have the same 
build up for when Optic was obviously selecting this map when they yeah. played the last time around, but FaZe were still being beat on rotation. And on top of that, even when they are finding ways to win at rotation, their hold percentage isn't particularly great either. So that's got to be the key change, I think, from watching them play Optic on this map yesterday to how they approach it today. Trust your rotations, do a little bit of extra reassurance of what our setups are, and believe in that. Because if you're winning those rotations, you're putting your ARs in the most best positions you possibly oh, can. Oh, yeah. Talk about top three. Top Snow was such a crucial position for either Celium or Draza to try to dominate. But don't forget, on a map like Subbase 2, Simp also pulls out that third AR. It's alongside of BZ in certain situations. So it's going to be all about the AR presence on a map like Sub. And I know when we were talking about this with FaZe, it's like, hey, this is a this was a great kind of curveball out of Optic. You're forcing the SFGs to have to swap to the yeah. MCW. But really, all things told, both Simp and BZ looked good with MCWs yeah. yesterday. <laughs> Just come down to a couple of the decisions weren't fully fleshed out. So that, I am sure, was looked at, learned, and hopefully for FaZe fans, will show up immediately as we get ready to go for this sub base. But again, it's still, we're, as much as it feels weird to say, it, these hard points are David and Goliath's stories yeah. with how much Ultra have beat down everybody in the league, no matter the map. And I think the matchup that I'm really looking forward to is the matchup that was dominated on one side of map number one. That's yeah. between Scrap and Draza. We know both of those guys are going to be chirping across stage, but Scrap got the better of him in map number one because Draza was late to a couple rotations. But you played the map yesterday. It's freshly in your mind of how you lost it. You do the things right. By just being the team on the preferred side, you will be able to force a game five. On the other side, can you stop this man? Oh my god. They were able to stop him on map number one. Keep in mind that 4.17 came by way of a skid row. So this isn't exactly one for one, but still that number is stupid. 4.17, unreal. 21 to 25 non-traded. It's just, it's just it's gross, filthy. Put that away. There are children present. Here we go. Right off the break off face. Trying to find their way collectively through the water side. And like you mentioned, this is all about side swapping. And it's starting off on the bad side as well. Nothing of the frags is going to be able to connect onto the player on point. But look at the setup from Ultra. They know exactly where they're coming from. You have Insight already pushed out towards P5. Everyone else watching over comm side. You have Long Street. You have bottom comms as well. That's already three dead in the feed for Atlanta. Last player up is Celium, but it's still Ultra. So good time. At least for FaZe, this keeps numbers a bit more limited. You have a chance maybe off this rebuttal to find some more success as here comes the hit from Draza right around the back. With Scrap not able to get away and good assistance from Easy. So the break of the hard point good and keep your eye on the bottom side of the minimap. FaZe finding success, trying to flip the spawns. Oh, but the big thing right there was Kleenex finds that kill at that moment. When you get that kill, your teammates are now going to continue to spawn in towards the back end and now they have the man advantage off the rotation. So it's about these fights and that's Serrano coming out on top of BZ the soul man here to try to make something happen he gets sniffed out but now you're one shot no trophy systems are going to be here to help him so they're going to push him out be aggressive Toronto Ultra maintaining the spawns for now decent trades though face still right at the front doors trophy system earned Traza doesn't quite get it through the window but doesn't make a difference with the MCW shooting as straight as that scrap trying to mantle over the top not going to work out Traza doing it all himself until Kleenex has something to say and he's going to say it not once but twice a BZ backside pitch trying to get in through it himself but no Ultra will hold and now that first scoreboard series looking dangerous and this is some good time right here you he already have scrap in its position towards top snow he does get cut down, so you have an opening for Atlanta to get out. But you see on your mini-map, Simp working up through the cat room. If he can find a couple kills, if they can find these kills right now, you will be able to flip those spawns. They read the flip from oh. Scrap, but now it's a 2v3 towards the hill. Kleenex makes another one happen. He's on a 5. Oh, make it 6. <laughs> Cruise missile hurt. I mean, come on. Quick snap. Now off the reach and 1v1, not 1. Vezbizzi will finally put him to rest. Looking over towards Sub. Good kills early here from FaZe, but boy, I'll tell you, they need something. They need something quick. And the good thing right now, if you are Ultra, Kleenex was able to earn that cruise missile. So that could be the factor to why you decide to go for a break, but the guns are even hotter. They find the kill. Scrap with the beamer. All four dead. Atlanta phase again forced to hit up this long street, but it's Ultra winning the fights at the right time, putting themselves on a the preferred side, and gaining this clock. I mean, this has been stressful in all regards for FaZe to this point, and it's not looking good on the scoreboard. 75 to 14. Oh we still God. got 25 seconds left. Envoy's already rotating to new. I mean, have your cake and eat it too if you're Ultra. They're just a step ahead right now. There are multiple steps They're ahead miles so ahead. far on this map. <laughs> But you see, with only 15 seconds Whoops. remaining on old, the rest of Toronto Ultra slowly trying to work their way to set up a potential pinch. Envoy starts it off with the first. Where is Abiz? He's now going to spawn. He should spawn over towards the P2 side. He's actually going to get the comm spawn. So he's able to reinforce quickly. But you see the route from Envoy. A little water boy. 
So he's trying to get this kill onto Sam to set up the pinch. Sees a noggin. We'll take care of it. And then the turtle oh! selling him. Oh my. Insight in the hard point. Renetti out in the help from Kleenex is so darn good. Four in a row now for Envoy and already past the 100 point mark. Go Ultra. And this is the only hill that you prefer the back spawns, at least initially. And if you are Toronto Ultra, you're chained up with those kills and you flip them right on back. Oh, now it's time to be oh. aggressive up through the middle of the map. Scrap with the beamer across it. Ultra already finding themselves up by 100. Oh my goodness. Uh, wow. Hard point that needs no words. Exhibit A. Oh my goodness. 11 and 5 from Kleenex. I mean, it's just every way you look at it, <laughs> it's not been good for Atlanta. Moment here to try to just stabilize, take a breath, cauterize the wound. Let's get this thing back under grip. You just have to win a fight. Something. Right now, Toronto Ultra, they're getting it all done through the middle of the map, and this is where you get Kleenex to get the info with that cruise missile. Man. You have to stay inside doors. Yeah, at least finds one onto Simp, but the hill's white. That's the best case scenario right now for Ultra because they're spawning on the bad side. I mean, when you're calling in cruise missiles up 110 points, that's like nail meet coffin. Selium battling back and oh, battling back stiffly. Four in a row for him. Looking for five, but scrap matches with a double of his own. Atlanta in the hard point for the time being, but Ultra coming off or just not losing gunfights. I, I, I mean, it's getting ridiculous. Atlanta fans are just not checking both sides of the street when they're crossing right through the road. Every single time they're thinking one player's from that position, no, Ultra already setting up pinches. They're thinking a step ahead and they already flipped the spawns as well. As we go into the second half of the rotation, they are not losing any fights. Even the team shots are on point. Everything right now for Toronto Ultra is picture perfect. Scrap time going to be earned over to new numbers aren't even comfortable enough for FaZe to jump immediately into the hard point. Still work to be done in terms of clearing out the space needed to get any sort of a setup. You're on the wrong side of the map. I mean, it's a laundry list of things that would have to go right here for FaZe to even consider the word comeback. They just don't have any power positions. Top slow is currently held right now by Toronto Ultra. Top three is held by Toronto Ultra. The preferred side of the map is held by Toronto Ultra. And it's been like that the entirety of this map number four. Trades are abound, but finally Atlanta FaZe have some breathing room. Toronto Ultra in a position now with only 30 seconds left. We can chalk this P1. We need to make sure no one overextends behind us, but also make sure no one comes through the front. And with only three players left on that side of the map, they still have those spawns. You just got to maintain them now. Lots of time to be earned here for FaZe. This will bring it back to just inside a 100-point margin. But here come Ultra, just not giving up anything. The follow-up gunfight's absolutely flawless once again. Simp in trouble, immediately dealt with, selling him the last one alive. And he's able to at least deal some damage. But, I mean, it's just Ultra are giving FaZe absolutely nothing. It's just, it's abusive at this point. And right back up the triple-digit deficits as Ultra own rotation. We just said it last week, like... They just 100 point club New York. This might be even better versus one of the better teams that we have in the CDL because Atlanta face simply cannot get out. It's already 15 seconds uncontested to finally Atlanta get a couple kills in their favor. Oh. Teammate isn't going to help, but at least the spawns do flip. They find a trade on the envoy and finally Atlanta can get some good time off of this P2. Got to string together these two hard points just to give yourself something to work with. Flat out just has to happen. Kleenex, what? Are you kidding me? Still able to fight. It can't be that easy. Tumble. Cell confirms the trade, but like you said, it's just too simple. And I'll tell you, MC's doing what he can to kind of keep FaZe in this game. But I, I say that with so much hesitancy because they're still not in this game. They're still not in it. Toronto Ultra every single time. They are here for the trades. There's no one-on-one -on -one gunfights. They are playing as a unit. And that's what finds themselves up by 100 points and still. But off the rotation, you see Ultra, they have one player spawning all the way across the map, but this is a hill that's very difficult to get time if you have to restore the way Kleenex is holding it down. Selling him down to the back, also see the scene towards Simp. Oh my goodness. Draza, mid-map, just hoping, praying he can get away with something he shouldn't, and maybe he just has. Double kill comes through. Kleenex does confirm the trade, but an opportunity for FaZe to make a bit of a mess of this setup from Ultra's perspective. Still. 180 playing 74, and the hit still has to largely still come from the front. Yeah, you still have the back spawns if you are Ultra, so no sweat off the brow. We just have to clutch up on these next couple of fights, and they're already coming out on top of the trade. Make Bro. it three, all four dead. <laughs> Kleenex had himself, what, a 4.17 on a different map like Skid Row, but 20 and 13, already a cruise missile earned, and potentially a chance for another. 
They're gonna breach that 200 point mark, and if they find a break on this P4, it's basically GG. And it's just uh, chess playing checkers right now. Ultra are sitting, waiting to see if FaZe are gonna get aggressive on their setup. That doesn't happen, so now here we go. Heavy handed push around the back. It's just trying to pick FaZe apart little by little. It's just so clinical. One name will tag, Selium follows up with a double, so okay. Again, another moment for small breaths here for FaZe as they get their lockdown over towards Tunnel. And they have Drossin being the player through the middle of the map watching that cross, but he only's able to take down one. Now Ultra had the opportunity. Let's spam our nades, let's slam our stuns right through the front, blow up these trophy systems, and allow the Kleenex to slide right on in. That's exactly what he's going to do. He does fall on the crossfire, and it's still Atlanta FaZe holding on. They breach that 100-point mark, make it three dead, four dead in the feed. Okay. Here we go. Maybe a chance. FaZe would still have to win this rotation. And Ultra already pressing the issue through warehouse side. Synth will get every second because I'll tell you, every single second's needed. Good follow-ups here from FaZe. Scrap not being traded out initially, but eventually taken down. And we're going to have a 50-50 battle for P5. And this is big kills from Atlanta FaZe because you can apply the pressure to this new hill from the front. Okay, we're winning all those plus gunfights at the player source top snow to the player source top warehouse but you still have to contest this hill not give up this time to toronto ultra only 30 seconds left you see a bz he's trying to go for a route he's trying to be the playmaker need to find an opening and you need to find it quickly that could do it envoy taken care of draws it back over towards top office scrap there to meet him trades across the middle of the map though still has phase the precipice are trying to break this but ultra kills are coming through and ultra That's just over. simply say hey cdl desk you think we haven't played anybody hurt my feelings 245 <laughs> to 128 put him to bed head to the grand finals ultra perfect We were questioning if Ultra were going to be ready for this moment. They didn't really have a lot of tough matchups in the online qualifiers. Breeze through their winner's bracket side at this tournament. But when you go up against a tight, you need to show who you truly are. And they are the best hardpoint team in the game. And you're taking down Atlanta FaZe in search and destroy. Without question, they are the top dog to beat. Unreal, man. <laughs> it's just another series where we're going into it saying these are going to be battlegrounds. Oh, yeah. Flat out, looking at the maps, looking at the teams matching up against one another. We said it versus New York a couple weeks ago, and we 100% expected it coming in. But a beat down here in map number four, a 6 1 stomping on FaZe's best search and destroy map. Woo! <laughs> what else do you say? That's the biggest thing that you got to take away, Alan, is that the fact that Atlanta FaZe lose a search and destroy the way that they did. They're usually great at making those mid-round adjustments. But every single time they try to do that, Ultra were prepared for it. Multiple plays coming in from Envoy, multiple plays coming in from Scrap, and as you take a look at that game flow, it was not even close from start to finish. Utter dominance from Toronto Ultra to make themselves a nice little spot in the grand finals and the thing about it is you got to be feeling super confident oh, yeah.